All right, we have a special guest for this video. So we're gonna talk about a different type of inheritance known as implementation inheritance. Uh, and so, oops. Uh, and so uh, the difference between this and what we had before is that whereas interface inheritance, the subclasses inherit the signatures, but not the actual implementations. Uh, in Java, there's a way to also do what's called implementation inheritance, where you get not just the signatures, but also an implementation, uh-oh, along with it. See, I don't like it either. Implementation inheritance in general, I find to be not such a good idea. Now, if you want to do this, the way it works is we're going to use a keyword called default, uh, where we specify that <laughs> you silly little pupper. Uh, you use default to specify a method where you want to actually inherit the code. So for example, let's suppose we want to add a print method to list 61B. So it turns out uh, we're going to go to list 61B. I already have it. I'm going to delete it and we'll drop make it again. Uh, and so the way this is going to work is instead of just having public void print uh, and then putting a semicolon, we're going to see default public void print. Now you might say, how could I possibly write a print method when I don't actually have any list implementation? Like, do I have an array, a linked list? Who knows? Well, the thing is, we do have all of these other methods. And so we could, for example, do something like this. For int i equals 0, i is less than size. Someone's falling slowly. This is tough. Oh, you want to type. Oh, no, you just want that. OK, good. Anyway, uh, and then we could do, nope. Uh, then we could just say system.out.print, uh, get i plus space. And then once we're done, we'll do system.out.println. Okay. So this print method will be automatically inherited, not just the fact that it exists, not just the interface, but also this implementation. So for example, if I go back to is a demo, uh, we could do some list.print. Okay, so if you were wondering what that was before, uh, that's because I've added a print method here. So I run print, and we get, oh, well, one sec. All right, now when we run it, we get elks dwell on existential crises. Okay. Now that sum list method here, or sorry, that sum list variable, this is a list 61B. And so it's automatically invoking uh, this method here. All right, so hopefully that makes some sense. Uh, and basically the point there is that it's telling you not just what a list can do, but also how to do it. Okay, so here's the method we just wrote. Uh, and so what I'd like you to do to close out this video is, do you think the print method is an efficiently written method? Uh, does it work well? Is the runtime for it going to be reasonable? And so uh, the question is whether or not it's efficient or inefficient for A list and S list. And I'll leave it to you to think about for the next few seconds. We'll just hang out in the meantime. What do you think? You liking being in the video? Okay, well, they're pausing you right now so that they can think, right? Okay, so it turns out the correct answer is that it is efficient for a list. It's pretty quick. It'll run in linear time. But for s list, it'll actually be quadratic. And the reason is that the get method for s list that we saw in discussion is actually going to be pretty slow. Uh, so if we go to the get method here, it actually needs to iterate through the entire list every single time. So that if I need to get item, say, 7, I have to go through seven iterations of this loop. Whereas with a list, <laughs> a little silly, uh, the get method is relatively simple okay, and very fast. All right, that's that for uh, this video. And we'll talk about how we can override even a default method in the next video. I did it. I even wrote code. Was it a good video? Maybe. Oh, it's still recording.